Dream Theater is a 24 hour theater project where you write, act, direct, stage manage, tech. You produce a play or several plays if you have enough groups over a 24 hour time period and then we perform them for an audience um, and donate the proceeds to charity. I always get a few trusted colleagues together. We come up with a theme and we basically just take that theme and, it, and let it be the kernel of thought for them to organize their plays around. But then we come up with a lot of crazy rules because that's just fun. So the first phase, they come into the theater and we do um, a slideshow reveal of the theme. I usually like to try to throw them off. Um, for years, I have told them I'm going to do Star Wars. the first year that they were when they saw the Star Wars stuff they were they sound a little disappointed but most years they're disappointed that we're not doing Star Wars so we kind of throw them off base and then we reveal the theme <laughs> so sometimes we do contests to come up with some of the rules that they'll have to follow for example, we might do a Kahoot on theater trivia or director trivia, and that might help them determine like what song they might use or a phrase that they have to use. Or we, um, we love the one where we use letters of the alphabet and we scatter the letters around the stage and then all of their props have to start with that letter. So then after we do all of that, we determine all of the rules, the kids go into their separate writing rooms. And there the head writer takes the reins and, and really starts to craft the show. It's really the head writer's job at that point to just get everyone thinking ideas and how can we organize it around the theme. Um, I think it's going great personally. Our team is having a lot of great ideas and there really hasn't been too much negative conflict. We've had mostly like positive, helpful conflict in our story. I think that everyone in our group has gotten along really well and we all kind of divided amongst ourselves really well. And once, in the beginning, it was definitely like we were all talking over each other, but once we got all the details solidified, we, we started rolling and it's going, it's going real well. A challenge has been getting like everyone to communicate with each other and- Stay focused. Stay focused and figuring out like, we write something and then realize, oh, we have this rule to still do, so we have to go back and do that rule. But honestly, things have been going, I don't want to jinx us, but things have been going very well. It's definitely been an experience. I'm working with a lot of people I've never had to work with before. And so because of that, it's, it's kind of been hard to adjust to everybody's personalities, which wasn't a challenge I was expecting to have. Actually, writing the script has been a little bit easier than I initially anticipated. Yeah, like getting down ideas was probably the hardest part, but like also the easiest at the same time. Like we got the initial idea, but then like where to go from there. It's time to go to the theater for the wheel no! of no! So last year, Marcos and I started a new trend called the Wheel of Fate, and we told kids we weren't gonna do it this year. That was a big fat lie. If we gave them the entire night to write, they'd pretty much get it done by three, maybe two o'clock. So we wanna add just a little bit of challenge to that and do stuff that keeps their brain active and engaged so they could stay awake a little easier without the need of a bunch of snacks. Last year, we only had one group, so every, they just spun the wheel every hour. This year, we have three groups, so we decided to make some more contests to see who gets to spin and who's safe. For each challenge, the teams must choose one champion to compete in it, and they can't know what the challenge is ahead of time to keep it fair on who they pick, as well as it just keeps a bit of element of surprise, and it leads to a lot of fun and shocking revelations. Each representative will be given a D20. 
Four. <laughs> Fifteen. <Yes>. Six. <laughs> Let's see what we get. Start from scratch. <laughs> One scene has to start with a record scratch sound effect. <laughs> the Wheel of Fate is a super, super fun time, but it is important that all the consequences from it aren't super effective towards the show's writing. They are usually punishments that either they have to add something to the script, or it's just something that's preventing them from working for just a tiny bit. They are not meant to be big impacts whatsoever. Allow me to show you your challenge. <laughs> Oh! Attention everyone, please make your way to the auditorium for our third challenge. It is a picture you must paint of Marcos. To in one scene, a character must cocoon. The next scene, they turn into a beautiful butterfly. Yeah. Do this. Oh, oh no. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do that. For 15 minutes, I have made an audio recording. <laughs> and it's going to play at full volume on my Bluetooth. You cannot tamper with it. Uh, so we're just gonna start it off with uh, just a little bit of. We usually stop spinning the wheel around 2 a.m. because uh, that's usually about the time we start letting our writers go to bed. Uh, the head writer will stay up and piece together uh, everything that the writers have come up with. Hopefully it's at a good point where all they have to do is really make sure the characters are consistent and that they're telling a coherent story. But the head writer will usually stay up tell about breakfast to do that, while everyone else will go to bed at two o'clock or a little later, and we just have a big slumber party on the stage. By 7 a.m., all the head writers must turn in the final script of their show so we can make the photocopies while everyone's at breakfast, so that way after breakfast, they can get right to work on rehearsals. After breakfast, the writers turn into either techs or actors and the actors know what parts they're playing but now the techs are going to make sure that they get all of those technical elements and all the requirements done they're going to um, go with the designer um, and really figure out what they need to do in order to make all of those things happen the stage manager will stay with the production as much as possible that's why I have a designer, because then the designer can take the lead and really take the text through that process. Last year, we just had one group, you know, we we did it in February. Kids weren't sure about it because we hadn't done it for a couple of years because of COVID. We didn't have to divvy up 
any time whatsoever for different groups to be on the stage. But we have three groups this year and we've had as many as I think five or six maybe even. And when you have a lot of different plays, you've got to figure out the stage time. And we just encourage the kids, we tell the directors, you need to direct that even if you're not in your space, even if you're not on stage, you've got to direct it in the room. So each group gets a certain amount of time on the stage. We try to keep that as equal as possible. I was around when we first started doing extreme theater here and it's changed a lot. There's a lot less crying, uh, sugar crashes, projectile vomiting, all sorts of that stuff. Uh, and instead what we got is a bunch of creatives who really want to be here and push themselves to their limits to create art for charity. And I think that's one of the coolest things uh, you can do, especially at their age. So one of the things that I really like about extreme theater is we just, this is just about creating art, but also giving back to the community. We're trying to just have this wonderful project, but then we always choose a charity. And this year we um, decided to donate to Camp Can Do, which is a camp for kids who are living with cancer. Um, and we we're inspired by that, by our community show last year was Newsies. And one of our Newsies had been diagnosed with brain cancer at age two. And so he had lived the bulk of his life with brain cancer, but yet he wanted to come here and be a newsie with us. And um, Halston really touched us all. He just was really so much in that newsy spirit. And he connected with everyone in the audience. Like he stood out to the audience too, which was awesome. I know that that camp which allows kids to just go and be kids was a really important part of um, how he wanted to live his last months. One of the great things about extreme theater is that uh, while most productions take two to three months, this is all done within 24 hours. So kids can make choices to do things that they normally wouldn't do in a theater environment. For some of these kids, it's their first time teching. Other kids, it's their first time acting, and they get to see if they absolutely love it or if they really, really hate it and never want to do it again. But at the end of the day, they are creating these amazing, weird, sleep-deprived projects, but it's all for a great cause, and it's just such a challenge, and it's inspiring to see them all take it on. A huge number of kids were just like, this sounds cool. And they are having so much fun. When I say extreme, you say theater. Extreme. Theater. Extreme. Theater. Extreme. Theater. It's, it just feels good to have theater on the rise again. Um, COVID was so grim. And then we couldn't even do extreme theater for a couple of years. but. Now it's like it's back and it's stronger than ever. We have oh, like 42, 43 kids here who are working hard together. And some of them, there's kids here who I just met tonight, whose friends said, hey, this sounds fun. You guys wanna do this? I, I think that extreme theater is such a worthwhile project. It does take a lot of planning, but if you, if you use the resources around you and the people around you to help you. And I think that's true for everything. There's people out there who will help. And if you incorporate them into it, it makes it just as much fun for you as it is for the kids. I gotta tell you, it's a blast. Like I'm walking around, I go into the rooms, like they're writing crazy stuff on the boards and I'm just like, it, it just warms my heart. This brings people together and it makes it just such a, a great way for us to represent in this department.